Hello and a warm welcome to the 36th DocFest Munich and to our talk today about film festivals, a lobby for the industry. My name is Adele Kohut and I'm part of the festival management team and I'll be co-moderating this event today with my colleague Fina. So normally we would welcome you today here in this beautiful Baroque hall in Munich to join us in this uh, cinema we would have built here. But this won't keep us from the topic today because we will be talking about cinemas, about the audience, about films, and more precisely about festivals where all these join together. And here even more precisely about festivals looking into the future and looking into the perspectives we will have. Because festivals in the last few years became more and more the nucleus within the film industry and distribution chain. And the documentary field has changed rapidly in the last years, and even more so through the corona crisis. And we do think that it's urgently needed now that we are facing all these new challenges by asking ourselves and rethinking our role and reshape it. And this whole process is necessary not only for us, the festivals, but we want to do that in a collaborative way. And that's why we introduced this beautiful panel today. And um, we think that it's necessary to do that, as I said, in a collective way. So that's why we also funded or founded for more almost uh, the Doc Network, which called Doc Around Europe. That's a network we founded with four partners in total. So a big thank you also to Docs Barcelona, FIPA Doc and Maki Docs to join in into this new adventure. And for us, it's interesting to go into exchange, into collaboration, and to discuss the future options of the festival generally. With Doc Around Europe, we want to strengthen the circulation of European film works. We want to promote and create encounters. We want to give possibilities and access to newcomers, to new talents, as well as to well-established people, to give them a hand and to develop their projects even further in the next steps and to give access accessibility into the networks that are there already or even to networks that are there to come and up and rising as ours, for example. And we are very happy to tackle this topic today, not on our own, but with you, our dear panel guests, our experts and colleagues. And now I'd like to welcome on my side, Fina, who will introduce to you our guests for today. Yeah, I'll take on this very nice task. A warm welcome also from my side. My name is Florina Fögerzofer. I'm co-head of Doc Forum, which is the industry platform of DocFest. And I'm very much looking forward to this discussion today we will have with um, four great panelists. First of all, there is Denise Bucher, who's a journalist with focusing on film and the film industry in her work. She's based in Zurich, Switzerland. Hi, Denise. Then we also have with us from France, Maëlle, and now the surname is my task for today, Gene Guess, as I just learned who is a distributor working for Cat and Docs based in Paris, and there she is responsible for festivals and acquisitions. I would also like to welcome Sonja Heinen from the European Film Promotion, who is with us from Hamburg today. She's been working for Berlinale before and has been traveling around a lot through different festivals. So we are really looking forward to your input. Then last but not least, there is Marion Schmidt, from the newly found Documentary Association of Europe, who has also a long history in working for the documentary film industry. Hi, Marion, you're here from Berlin today. Together with our network partners, Adele just introduced to us, we have been asking ourselves some questions over the last year. The answers to some of those questions, we summed up in short videos for you, and we will watch those clips now taking time to discuss our answers after each clip. We will direct questions on our answers to these questions to the panel, because we're looking for broad and honest feedback from the industry, because as Adele said, it's now the time to rethink our position within the industry. And we would like to know what role the industry will assign to us and how we can meet these expectations. Of course, you as an audience are also very welcome to participate and drop in your questions. You can do that via the chat function 
here in the webinar. And with no further ado, I would say we're going to start with the first clip. Evolving new film language to festival landscape. We try to find films from non-typical territories, expand our program from France and Spain and Germany, involving films that are challenging to audience, to develop audience horizons. We follow the work of students up until their su success, discovering new authors, helping them to keep working in documentary films. We work with films in four different aspects. In the development process, we have the films to look for the best story and the best film. In the process of financing, we have the films with the speed meetings and the pitching in order to help to finance the production. In the editing session, we, we help the films with the rough cut sessions. And after that, we show the films in our festival in Dogs Barcelona. It is our responsibility to create and to show films which excel in form, of course, but also films that can trigger hope, questioning, emotion, call for action. In addition, we must foresee if and how the genre is changing and what new borders are being trespassed. So that's, we are not only showing the best films, but also looking for new ways of telling stories. It is important for us to show the broad range that documentary film offers in our program, in form as well as in themes, and to bring this to our audiences here. In the selection we do primarily, of course, focus on the quality of the films, but also on the form, on new approaches and new formats of storytelling, and to give these a special visibility and a platform. We do feel it is our responsibility to ask ourselves with each film, do we have the right audience and the right outreach for them? And the same applies also to the projects at the DOC Forum. Do we have the right partners and network opportunities to bring these projects further? Now that we heard the first clip, um, I would like to address our first question to Mael and Denise. Maybe Mael, you will go first. Do you think that festivals are courageous enough to give a platform to new films? Yeah, I think in the industry landscape, it's probably the, the place where that has the, the, the most, uh, if you want to call it courage, <laughs> I will reuse that name, but um, yeah, that you know, um, gives a platform to uh, films that have a hard time uh, making it to, you know, um, TV stations or uh, theatrical distribution. So yeah, in that sense, I think really um, festivals are uh, much more uh, welcoming of uh, new forms and, and usually it starts with festivals before it gets to to the rest of the industry, this uh, acceptance of uh, new forms. Denise, what would you say as a film <laughs> critic looking into that field? Mm -hmm. um, um, I agree with um, Mael. And to me, especially during 2020, I was, uh, it was extremely important to have the festivals, to have the opportunity to see new films brave films, um, experimental approaches to, um, to filmmaking, because otherwise with the cinemas closed and only more or less Netflix at hand, it was, it was impossible. Mm, is there anything else you would wish the festivals to do to give those new films a platform? Maya, maybe you go, or Denise, yeah, please. I hope that in the future, the festivals will provide a hybrid, um, um, well, <laughs> will take place in, in the hybrid forms. So I can choose whether I want to attend in, in person or watch from home. 
this was a, a really big opportunity uh, to to have access. It's it's all about access, and this is this is really a, a big um, big thing for me to being able to access uh, attend festivals that I wouldn't have the opportunity otherwise. Mm -hmm. And maybe that also goes to you, Mel. Are there any wishes or any requests you have for the festival landscape um, to give encourage well, on the platform? I mean, if, if I am to react to what Denise just uh, said, it, it's true that the hybrid form or the online uh, version of festivals ha has um, allowed a, a new audience to, um, to, to attend this, uh, the, the festivals, but in, it has also disrupted our job when, in terms of uh, you know, selling films. And so if, if that doesn't come with a, a healthy revenue, then, uh, then it's becoming problematic because we have to ensure that filmmakers can leave from their, from their work. So that's, that's the most, it's not only, it's the whole industry, but at the bottom line, it's also filmmakers and they're the one who take the, the biggest blow in this, uh, in this changes. So I think we have to keep them in mind the whole time. Mm -hmm. And do you think there is enough done by the festivals to ensure it, and help it, films in their development? And that it stage? depends. And also for us, it's hard to manage because we have no idea of, uh, about the financing of the festivals and what it implies to have both forms, what the costs are. We can only trust what we are told, but it's hard for us to negotiate anything because we don't really know. Uh, so I think in the future and after this whole thing, <laughs> kind of settles, we will need data. We will need to know exactly who is this new audience that you have reached, uh, what, what it meant for you in terms of uh, funding and, or, or uh, investment and all that. So everybody in the industry can reshape. It's not that we are you know, rigid or we're reluctant to change. It's more that, uh, that right now we're losing more than anything in terms of uh, revenue. And that has, I mean, that uh, that impacts us as a company, but it impacts the whole chain, the producers and the filmmakers. So we are, you know, at, it's yeah at the forefront in a way to find a, a solution that that works well for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can go a step back because we are right now very much in distribution. And there was a lot of talk in this video also about helping films to develop and helping films in progress. So I would like to address that question to you, Marion. Uh, is there enough done by festivals to help the films in development, to help them develop the projects, to get funding also, or also to develop the stories? What would you say there? Um, thank you very much, Fina. I just wanted to comment on what Mael said, because actually in preparation for this panel, when I was also already watching the videos, I put two big words on my notes, which are transparency and data. And I truly, truly um, agree with what Mael just said, that I think it will be very important after this year and a half to also pause for a second and to collect all of this data and to kind of Uh, and, and kind of encourage all of the players within the industry to be transparent about uh, what actually happened and then you, to develop solution, solutions based on these data. And I guess coming back to your question now, um, Fina, it's, I would again start from there also because obviously all of the festivals, like the, the festivals that we've seen in the statement and that form part of this network are very different and have extremely different target groups. And also here, I would like to start from the word transparency, because I think a lot is being done from all of these festivals. Amazing work. You're all doing amazing work. I guess that sometimes it's also about being, being very transparent about the selection focus of the festival in terms of what is um, selected for the development process. And then also, how are these films being selected? Who selects them? And um, is the jury and the are the juries and the selection committees representative of the community that it, that forms the target group of this festival? So mm -hmm. I I would kind of say looking at the selection of Dogfest München this year and also the different platforms that Docs Barcelona offers or Market Docs offers or FIFA Doc also offers, I think it, it's again about being transparent to how you encourage 
and who is encouraged to be part of them and how, what can you get out of them as a filmmaker and how can these opportunities initiate a journey to um, finishing your film. This is number one. And then number two, obviously a big topic also in the video that we just saw is the word inclusion. And I think that, um, I guess inclusion also requires a lot of work on, from the side of the festival. It's not something that is only a word. It's not something to be inclusive. And I'm going to come to an end, sorry. But there's also a specific effort that needs to be made to, um, you know, to, to relay the feeling of, to a filmmaker that this is a place where I can go with my project, where I'm welcome, regardless of the topic, the form, um, or also my background. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this very important comment. Sonia, anything you would like to add? Uh, yeah, first of all, I would like to say that I think it's great when uh, festivals uh, understand their responsibility also, uh, the changing also respons responsibility in the past uh, uh, months or year, um, and that you are also interested in uh, Of course, uh, you can always reshape something, but it's also always important to hear from everybody involved. And I'm really uh, happy you are in this process of uh, doing it. But um, before, you know, before a year ago, I would have uh, said maybe there is not really so much what festival can do more for films because, I mean, uh, films are supported in the mentoring stage, in the development through the festivals or via the festivals. The, the films are curated, in, in my opinion, that is the most important job of a festival, that to make a selection of all the offer you have. Yeah? And with this is what you mentioned, Marion, the transparency of how, uh, which is your curation line so that I, as a spectator, can see, ah, when I want this film, so I go to this festival, when I want to go more in this direction, um, I go to another festival, but of course also each festival has its own necessities, its own uh, uh, maybe necessities also to um, to access funding, to be happening at all. But I think uh, festivals are quite advanced, in my opinion, um, by helping the filmmakers, because festivals are doing it in every stage. And uh, I find it really great, which... Um, service you could benefit from uh, when you are a filmmaker selected with the film. Of course, when you're not selected, you don't have anything from it. But uh, if you are selected from a festival, um, I think you are really well, very much taken care of. And also, for example, when you present the works in progress, then also it's clear that the festival will follow you when the film is ready. And maybe some festivals will compete for the film. So I think it's, yeah, and in the, in the past year, Uh, I think the role of the festival has changed because somehow the festival was the only, the only way how, how you could see uh, art house films somehow. Yeah. Like Denise said in the beginning, it was just a great opportunity. And I maybe didn't have time in my job to go to five uh, festivals in one month, but I can see some of the work online. And that is, of course, a big privilege. Okay, um, thank you so much. I mean, it's, uh, it's interesting to hear your thoughts on this, although we think it's, uh, as we said already, it's the right time right now to look into the tasks and the question that we have to ask ourselves as festivals and reshape it, as I said, to, to build it into a sustainable future. So I think it's, um, there is still a lot of work that we can still do. And I would say let's jump into the second clip and look into the next uh, question that we raised. So please roll the clip. First, Fipadoc is deeply rooted in a territory, Basque country, and brings exceptional film in a place where they could not be seen otherwise. Second, Europe is part of Fipadoc DNA, We established a European Stories competition to give voice to European filmmakers and to their realities. This competition is awarded by a young European jury. Jurors are coming from seven different European countries. We should all focus on creative aspects of filmmaking more. 
development of ideas is the key thing that we can do during the pandemic. We should create a place to discuss, test our ideas, um, new meeting places that support and do not demand so much as traditional markets. And we should try to develop our projects during the years and keep them rolling. Also, what we need is to focus on our audience needs more and gain their trust in selection. There is more than 15 years that Dogs Barcelona has created the documentary of the month. And the documentary of the month arrived to all of Spain. We started with three venues and now we have 80 venues that every month has the premiere of one documentary. Doesn't matter in big cities or in small villages. That means Dogs Barcelona has helped it to put in contact audiences and documentaries. We as a festival can be the platform and the forum for encounter, discourse and exchange for various topics of our times and thus also draw the attention to and raise the awareness for pan-European issues socially, economically, politically as well as ecologically. The documentary film has the power to accompany and to process these changes and above all to discuss cultural change and best even influence and shape it. Furthermore, we see it as our task to anchor the documentary film as a genre, with, as a creative and artistic genre further in society. Because we think the documentary film has the power to tell us stories about humanity and its fallibility, about everything that makes us a human being. In order to make the documentary culture a popular culture and to increase the number of venues or the number of countries where we can have a presence of documentaries always, I think that we need five things. Vision, project, strategy, budget and goals. It's not difficult. Reinforce international alliance with other European festivals, as we do with Docker around Europe. And build concrete action to jointly promote European talents in films, but also in innovative technology like immersive documentaries or VR, which we see as a perfect entry to documentaries for younger audiences. We need more flexible funds, three-year schemes, to develop and to, to develop our projects over the years. We need understanding of distributors that it's difficult to predict, to predict online or offline uh, programming in this situation. We need social media developments, discussions with audience in another, in a new way. We need close relationship with filmmakers and we need to focus more on their development, development of the films and its problems. That's why we established Docs Around Europe Network to enable strong connections and make a distribution landscape of Europe a little bit more transparent and easier for films that would normally not travel as much. What is needed here is a dialogue and a clear commitment to culture in general, as well as to the documentary film, to promote it more substantially and strong, to support targeted as well as strong, courageous projects. That was the second one. And I would start off with the questions. 
question right now. Um, but I would also um, like to, I mean, we're here for like feedback, input and open discussion. So we are also welcome, welcome you to uh, say your critiques or things that you would like festivals to focus more on or so on. Um, I just wanted to put that ahead. And I also would like the audience to uh, invite the audience to engage. Um, the next questions, question I would have for you again, Marion. Um, we were talking a lot about audiences now during this clip. And what is your expertise regarding audience engagement? How do you think festival can encourage audiences to be more cu curious about new forms? Because we were saying before, oh, yeah, we have new forms or we have enough space for new forms with the festivals. But we also want people to watch them, I guess. And festivals often have those two sides, the crowd pleasure films and also the more courageous forms. Do you have any suggestions, ideas? What could they be done to give more space to those other films? I mean, there's, um, thank you very much. That's a very interesting question. Uh, question I would see what my other colleagues will have to say about this, but just a few words from my side. I mean, one of the things that I thought were beautiful were that we just had a few beautiful suggestions already and um, also about the great work that has already been done by Docs Barcelona about leaving the cinema Bringing, bringing documentaries out to the streets, bringing them to schools through education programs. And I think all of this is absolutely wonderful and great. And I think it should happen. And, and then there was this one important thing that Petra said, that obviously there needs to be funding. I mean, first and foremost, I think, and then we also go back when we talk about um, broadcasters and commissioning editors and the kind of money that is still made available for um, documentary films, also with the rise of the platforms and the question how we as an industry will be learning to interact with them. is like we need to lobby with the funders. That's also one of the things that we at, as the Documentary Association of Europe um, will, uh, which is one of our mandate to do, it is one of our mandate to do. Um, I think that there are many great ways in which um, audience can be developed, but first and foremost, to shoulder these challenges, there needs to be um, a clear commitment to documentary on a political level and on a funders level, um, so that the means are available to um, open these channels and to create these channels. And um, I, it's not like I have an answer to how this can happen, but I guess that this is something that we have to work on all collectively and something that we are on a day level are discussing um, with our colleagues also from the national, um, from the national documentary institution from institutions from across Europe. Thank you very much. I think that's a very, yeah, obviously very important topic to bring to the table, the funding. And I guess uh, this event is called Film Festivals, the Lobby for the Documentary Film Industry. So of course, I think it is also our task to, to tell how important documentary film is for us as a society. And this is, I think, where we would see our part in this. Um, Denise, is there, yeah, please, Marianne? Just something one sentence, I guess that's, um, that's one, one aspect that I would like to add is like it was also in, in the videos at some point, because I really do believe that it's not only the, 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 the festivals in their, in their programming and their curation line, um, and also in the, in the different labs that they are offering, have the option of kind of promoting, like this is where they can really promote, promote new voices and, um, and, and make space for documentary. But at the same time, I think within Europe, uh, going back also to the question of how to um, contribute to a vivid culture, it's mm -hmm. also the space where these critical debates can happen. And they are already happen, but maybe they can even happen, they could even happen more and be more critical of um, political developments within Europe that stand in the way of um, documentary, but also in the way of uh, human rights and, um, and, and other rights. Mm -hmm. Very important. Sonia, would you like to answer that question maybe as well? Because I think your perspective might be interesting in here as well. You mean from the side of, uh, of the funding? From the side of the funding and also the audience engagement, how we can, like the necessities of those two poles that we have. I think for I, I think first we may have to make a distinction be, between different festivals. There are those festivals which have a big industry also coming, 
and there are those festivals which are rather for the uh, for the public audience. And I think that is a difference. If, for example, Mael goes to a festival like uh, Hot Dogs in Toronto, she's going to sell maybe the film. She will have a world premiere of the film maybe, and then she's going to sell the film into many countries or acquiring more festivals who want to play the film. Or if you have a, 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 a or if you have a festival which is dedicated uh, to the audience. And in, in this moment, when you, the festival is dedicated to the audience, then it functions more like a, like a streaming platform yeah? at, at the moment, uh, <laughs> of course, not in, in real life. What is missing now is, of course, the exchange. And I think it is really um, what, uh, Mael, what you said in the beginning, the, for the filmmakers, for them, I mean, for all others of us, we can somehow make plan B, yeah, or we can, I mean, we have maybe less revenues, we have less fun also, <laughs> we have a lot of things less, but for the filmmakers, they are really missing the, the dialogue with the audience. And uh, in my experience from what I saw from last year, uh, CPH Docs was the first festival going online. And um, with an amazing, uh, uh, also commitment of the filmmakers who were all ready to be uh, online also. That was different for festivals with uh, who are not uh, showing mainly documentaries because documentary filmmakers are already used a little bit to the fact that, uh, let's say, um, uh, there are some big documentary festivals, but they, they, are more, they were more open to streaming uh, their films than others, but but I think the dialogue between the filmmakers and the audience this is really missing a lot. And um, I think also in the future, in for example, in future festivals, when you consider more sustainability and already therefore have to make probably hybrid versions of festivals, so that for example you don't have to bring. Uh, 100 film journalists from some somewhere, but you bring some important film journalists for you, and then others can watch the films from home. But I think the the um, uh, what what is important to to do is really to find an opportunity how the direct contact to the filmmaker can uh, can happen, and that is most important for documentary films because there's such a um, there's a such, such a strong vision and such a strong opinion from the filmmaker involved. Yeah, So I think sometimes it, when I read the director's notes, uh, it's so important for me to know that from the director. Um, and yeah, and I think this is still something which um, has to be realized uh, somehow, yeah? that there can be more exchange with the filmmakers. And for the Funds. I agree also what the Petra uh, from Makedox uh, said. Uh, of course, it should be possible that you have funding for three years or so, that you have something where you can build on, that you can, that you just, I know from my experience in Berlinale, then after a festival is over, I mean, you know, when you have done a good job, you most probably, most probably you will be able to convince uh, your partners again to, bid, to, um, to finance you. But every year a new game is really not easy for, um, for doing some, something really substantially and continuously. Yeah, you're, you're talking out of my heart, basically. <laughs> so this is exactly what we are facing every year. So you're completely right. But exactly what you say, Petra mentioned it in her clip already. Um, is the funding going into the right direction? If we're looking at media, for example, right now, they're looking into a different to reshape the scope, the scheme of festival funding, etc. If you look on the national, federal level, um, do you think it's going into the right direction right now? Like... Um, Maybe Marion, you know a bit about media and the program that might be coming up soon. Do you want to get that question and give us a glance into your insights and thoughts? Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I can um, serve this question really well, but I'm going to try. I mean, at the moment, there's obviously a lot of rumors going around. Um, I've heard from different people that I'm meeting that have heard and there's going to, there's going to be an announcement made very soon. So I'm I'm not sure if I'm the right person to comment on that. So maybe, I don't know if maybe Sonia knows more than I do actually at this point. 
I can say a little bit because we had, as we have uh, uh, 10 or 11 programs every year going on, so and, and EFP is, I would say, uh, nearly 70% financed through Creative Europe Media. Uh, so for us, it's totally crucial what is happening. So, uh, uh, but what, what I think, um, what, what will be good in the future is that they will be evaluating those uh, who are currently uh, applying and that there is an opportunity, not for this year because everything is very tight, but for uh, from 22 on that you can uh, get funding for more than one edition. I understood it could be three. It's all rumors now. <laughs> so, but, but I had the feeling that um, they really understood a lot of what happened in the industry. And I had also a feeling uh, that if they announced something which they wanted to do, but they had a harsh criticism from the uh, relevant industry towards this, that they were really reacting to that and said, okay, then it was maybe not such a good idea. Or I, I had the feeling they, I have the feeling they want to do really good things and give more stability also. So I'm, I'm optimistic uh, from, from that point of view. And I have also seen that, uh, I mean, for, from our part, uh, we have done so many programs since last year, which we had to reshape because of uh, Corona. Uh, and there was never a problem by convincing them that we would do something in another direction. It, it was always, they were super flexible on that. So I hope that this um, dynamic will change also for the new application deadlines. But um, from what I heard so far, I think um, I think I think it will be better. Let's hope so. Well, as we have one film journalist here, I would like to um, go with our questions that we just raised to you also, Denise. Like, first of all, you wrote an article, I think it was based on the Swiss, Swiss film industry and how it is rolling behind. And um, you were comparing a lot also with other European or international festivals. So I would like to get your feedback on the topic we just raised, like the financing funding structures. Do we think that might enable a vivid film culture in the future? Or what would be your opinion on that? Um, I can't say that much about funding because Switzerland is very much uh, <laughs> not the same as, as the rest of Europe. But um, as for the vivid film culture, I was wondering while I was listening to you um, what your opinion is on, for example, um, festivals working closer together with, with uh, cinemas during the year so that the festivals aren't just a unique event for about 10 days and then it's it's forgotten again but it would in 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 a certain way stay alive um by or, or with the help of of the cinemas as um mr uh, what was his name uh, herrero was saying we have to tear down the walls of cinema and um, and get the films out uh, into the public is this even something that festivals are considering well, for us, I can I can say that we do year-round programming, for example. Doc Around uh, the Clock is the program name for that. So we do that, but we would like to um, to give that answer back to you because you've you've heard also from Docs Barcelona, they're doing that same thing as well, going into all cinemas around uh, the country. I think 80 cinemas going with the Doc of the Month. So there are programs like that. But it's still the question. I mean, a festival is in the DNA uh, a temporary event, right? So we can't, um, I mean, cinemas and other um, film institutions, they have the, ob uh, the obligation maybe to do year-round programming. For us, it's just like we want to stick to the specific period of time, not to kind of um, give away or take away the space from the others. But how would you, how would you say is that, Sonia, maybe you want to answer. You become that. also a distributor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the? This is not the role that we're taking in. So, Mael, Ma do you want to yeah. chip in? <laughs> I think it also very much depends on the countries 
because uh, like in Germany, of course, there are tons of festivals. So if you do that, you will maybe step on uh, other festival festivals uh, foot. But uh, in in some territories where there's only one, it could make sense to have a year long programming. But I think maybe the, the key would be to work on the on the audience um, uh, engagement throughout the year. So reach to this to this uh, audience that uh, you're trying to to get in the cinema that are usually not the ones that attend the festival. And through the year, you should maybe trying to have um, uh, I don't know initiative with schools with because right now for example very very often when we when our films are used at, uh, within schools it's very often because of the topic but not because of the filmmaking and i think uh, a young audience especially one that is used to watching docs on netflix on our like short form documentary that are more i mean lining toward um reportage than you know real really creative documentary i think they need to be trained in a way to be used to this you know to, to the diversity of the genre and maybe that's how you get this new audience in but i also agreed with uh, uh petra uh, who said that uh, you need to gain uh, your audience uh, trust because once you have it then you can offer anything and they will follow because they you know, they, they will be curious to see what, what you'll show them. So I think this is maybe what uh, a festival should work on throughout the year, this, this building, this new audience, uh, reaching to, to uh, I don't know, this, this uh, fringe of the population that doesn't attend uh, festivals or, you know, really going out to this, um, to this fringe of the population. Uh, rather than, you know, multiplicating uh, screenings, because I do agree with uh, Adele about the need to remain eventful. Yeah, it says, it is also in the title, it's a film festival, yeah. It's exactly. A, I mean, it's a celebration uh, where everybody comes together. Yeah. And, uh, but I think also that in the, uh, now in the uh, COVID times when, uh, you, you just see other experience as possible, yeah. So and and then it comes also very easily the idea of why don't why don't use it more often? Why don't use the festival as a brand and show the films more? There come new ideas, but it is not in the origin of the name and of the idea of the festival. But still, it would be nice, yeah. When I like to go to a, for example, with a Berlinale. Um, the, in the Berlinale, there was always a summer Berlinale also from people from Berlin. So some of the festival films, which were not then yet uh, 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 in the cinemas, were coming then to Berlin audience uh, on the big screen in, in open air format uh, already since many years. Uh, so and the, the audience loved it, of course. But then the Berlinale was more a distributor. Yeah, but I don't, I, ha I actually really like festivals that have a touring program mm -hmm. if that means that they go to small villages but if they go from berlin to hamburg to Cologne to you know like big cities it doesn't make sense it's going out to yeah. to the places where yeah. people don't see necessarily these type of films and also get a chance to see it in proper condition with uh, on a big screen and with a conversation around you know like this this is what uh, we're trying to promote you know this uh, we all agree that festivals um, and especially documentary, the forte of documentary is the conversation, you know, that it uh, that it uh, com comes with. So, giving uh, people from remote areas uh, this opportunity, I think, is uh, is great. May I ask my other question based on what we just what we are discussing? Because I wondered, you as a distributor, what would you expect? I mean, it's just because I'm very curious about it, and I'm I'm also getting we are discussing these questions with filmmakers a lot. Also, is like what would you expect as a distributor from from festivals in terms of the kind of revenue this kind of year round programming and showing places around countries and different places should create for them. Once again, I think it depends on the on the countries. Obviously, if you talk about France, 
I would have higher expectation and usually that's not where the money is. And usually we are surprised because we get much more money from, I don't know, Czech Republic that is doing, that is doing a great job at reaching out to these uh, uh, less accessible uh, places. Uh, so we're, I mean, we're flexible with our uh, expectation, but it, it needs to come with a, with a counterpart. And of course, we take in consideration the economy, uh, the situation uh, of the country and all that. And if it's a country where, um, you know, you still have to, to bring or to build an audience for documentary, then we are more willing to, to lower our expectation than if we're talking about a country that has already a very uh, robust uh, documentary culture. So it, it depends. And, in, and, and we, are, we try to be flexible because in the end, it's, it's, you know, we're all in this together to try to develop documentary uh, all across uh, Europe and the world. <laughs> Maybe this is a good cliffhanger, Mael, and also your question, Marion, because if we go into the last block of our clips now, there we will look into the future and see what's needed for the next editions to come. So maybe let's roll the clip and see where we are heading in the future and then start from that point again. Thank you. I think that the festival of the future must be a hub of culture around documentaries and cinema. From the audience point of view, we need to open the walls of the cinemas and to arrive to the streets, to the squares, to the schools, to the homes and to the places that never had had a screen before. And from the producers and directors point of view, to help them from the idea until the screen where they have the premiere of the film, working with them with, with all the creative and financing process. Hopefully back in our venues in Biarritz with our public. Pandemic showed that some aspect of the work can be done online, but it remains problematic, especially for newcomers. Let's bear in mind that we all need opportunities for casual and unplanned meeting that a festival offers. Professional will likely travel to fewer festivals during the year. So our offer on site need to be upscaled and dubbed by an online version and replay opportunities. Future is uncertain, but as an audience or as a programmer, I have the only wish to make the festival's life again, because I th truly think that that's where we belong, to real life events and the interaction, which is much needed after pandemic crisis. Our vision is to continue pr to break down barriers and become more inclusive in many ways. A return to the past does not offer a future, but the vision for the future can only be created together with all the industry participants and representatives. Concretely speaking, there are still many questions that need to be raised and answered. For example, how will the rights be handled in the future? How will the exploitation of the film work? And what does a revenue model look like where everybody is participating? But it will also be our task to sharpen our profile, since the digital component means everybody's availability at any time in any place. That creates fatigue, but also a great opportunity that needs to be handled. Here we need to evaluate our current digital edition and see where does a these digital components make sense within the festival. For example, in the industry platform Doc Forum. Here, it will, be an absolute it will be absolutely necessary in the future to keep this component. But how does that apply to the audience festival as such? This still needs to be defined in the future. And we think this will be defined and founded in a collaborative strategy together. So having heard this, 
we also do have a connecting question in the chat that I would like to read out to you now. And uh, Mael, you be the one maybe to kick off the answer first. So this question comes from Jan Rofekam. So festivals now online should evaluate the issue of film rental. Online allows a potentially much larger audience than basically films are now accessible to the entire country, optionally for a longer time than the fest dates. Festivals should offer a share in the online revenue generated. I think that producers should have the choice to have the film online available, available for much longer time, exclusive for the festival dates, non-exclusive later on. Most films at festivals will never get any other distribution in that country. So today online via the festivals is the only option and to make some money for the filmmakers. So do you want to go a little bit deeper, Mel, and say what exactly would you look into a revenue share and how do you see that? I mean, I've heard this comment from Jan uh, several times <laughs> and uh, I'm not entirely sure. And once again, I think it's a uh, uh, country by country maybe decision because um, it's for us, in, for example, in some country, I mean, it's not only about having launch, like launching the film in one festival. Sometimes they play numerous festivals in the in the territory. And uh, so if you if you allow the, the the premier festival to keep the film online, then you you prevent other festival from programming it. And so from offering this, you know, uh, cinema experience and, and collective experience to other other people. And so and also the the numbers are, are not good in terms of uh, <laughs> of uh, numbers of views and the uh, and the money we get from it so once again i think this is this is on the table i'm not uh, completely discarding it but i think we need uh, we go back to <laughs> square one we need data we need um, we need to know exactly what we're talking about uh, to make informed decisions i don't think we can just have uh, opinions at, at this moment they, they're not valid without so in a way you're saying that also, sorry, sorry. Uh, so in a way you're saying that kind of the whole distribution chain has to change for this to be possible and also the revenue streams have to be rethought in a way. Because yeah. I think we need data because it's, if, if it means keeping a film online to have 10 views over six months, yeah. what is, and, and preventing another festival that would pay a flat fee that is much higher than the revenue share of this uh, number of views. I think it's also the question who is the rights holder. So when the producer, if there's no sales agent involved, for example, and the producer has the feeling or the filmmaker has the feeling there are no other festival festivals programming my film, then, I mean, it's, then it's his or her own decision to uh, to stay on the platform, maybe. Yeah, but I think it's they're not protected in a way. I mean, we yeah, act right. as that's right. this, it's also the role of a of a sales agent is to, we have information and we have knowledge and that's kind of what uh, we use to protect the rights of uh, that we represent the rights of uh, filmmakers and producers. And if you leave it to the producer and, or, and especially filmmakers, they will say yes, because all they want is their film to be seen. But I don't think it should come at any cost. Very often, I mean, filmmakers would be happy to leave, to let their film be screened for nothing. And we are there to say, no, I mean, you're, you're sh shooting yourself in the foot. If you let your work that amounts to, you know, usually numerous years of your life, be shown for, for nothing, you devaluate uh, your work. So I think it's, uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm going back to data. <laughs> Marian has a comment on that. I okay. think it's uh, all has been said. I guess I, I can only again stress um, and support Mail in, in, in the hunt for data because I really do think it's not the moment to jump to, to conclusions too fast. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that what Jan is raising um, the question, the option that Ran, Jan is raising is definitely connected to what my, the question that I asked before we played the video um, with regards to educational programming, for instance, around the year and the kind of revenue streams that can be or should be created from there. 
so the same applies to Jan, what Jan is saying, but I'm also completely with Mael that it is probably still more like a case-by-case -case decision. Um, and it depends on the film, on the country, on the territory. But I think Jan has another, has another comment. <laughs> probably. But the time is running out a little bit, so I'd rather go to you, the panelists, again, to give you the possibility to round up and give your final thoughts, maybe inputs, wishes that you have for us, the festivals and ideas that you want to give us to go along. Maybe, Denise, you want to start and give us your thoughts and your final remarks. Um, yeah, as I said in the beginning also, I, I think um, festivals have to ask themselves now what they want to be, um, whether they want to continue as they used to before the pandemic and be some kind of, uh, sorry to say it, an elitist club for some people who have enough money to travel and, and hotels and so on, or if they want to continue in hybrid forms or online and um, address an audience as broad as possible, which I would prefer, obviously. So um, I think the industry is, is not that old, but not that much has changed within the last um, decades. And now is the time to rethink more or less everything. And this is a, a huge opportunity. Thank you. Mael? You are like an hour screen, you're next to Denise, so I would just hand over to you. Uh, I, I would say that the two things that I uh, would uh, address is, one is for us to go beyond uh, the festival. The reviews of the, of the films are very important, the reviews of the films at festivals. And right now, my concern is that most trade magazines are based in the US and review very little of uh, non-US festivals. Uh, and so for us, it's really because we need press in English to be able to make the most of it and use it to promote the film. Um, I think it has shifted the power into the hands of, uh, of uh, American trade magazines and it's a bit problematic. So there are new uh, outlets at the moment that, online mainly that uh, we can use, but they don't have the same impact yet on the industry or the main, the same. Uh, so yeah, I think we, I think this needs to be developed and I don't know how festival can contribute to, to that. And then it's also the, the second warrior I have is the growing discrepancy between festival programming and, and um, broadcasters uh, tastes. That's, that's problematic. I won't explain. Sonia, we come. <laughs> Thank you, Mael. So, Sonia, maybe you go next in line. Yes, I go with Denise. I go for the hybrid uh, um, part because for the industry, it's good, I think, uh, in the future to uh, have a hybrid part because industry will become, in the future, more selective on which festivals they will, will go. So they would rather go to the bigger festivals where, where so much industry is also attending that they can see the films and meet the industry in the same place. But I think many people would welcome a lot um, then to be able to see the films online. And yeah, what I think is really that festivals have to create the opportunity for a direct exchange between the filmmakers, the production and sales team, the industry and the public audience. I think this for me would be, this uh, also supports uh, inclusivity and also uh, sustainability. I think there are a lot of topics and I think with a hybrid, um, with a hybrid version, that, that, that doesn't mean that everything must be rebuilt hybrid, but maybe a part of the festival can, uh, can be hybrid um, available yeah, or online available. I think that would really help. We're trying our best to do so. Yeah, but yeah we'll go back to the question of fun. Yeah, we know how difficult it is, yeah, but you asked the question. <laughs> so what do you wish? Yeah, true. But I mean, it's nice to, to know what the industry would be expecting from us so that we have 
all the arguments in hand also for our partners and financiers, you know. So mm. this is this feedback is of course very good for Valuable. us. For us, to yeah, know. exactly. Definitely, so, Marion. The last words are your so mark. I'm going Final to words. I'm going to try and be quick. So I think that um, we kind of all agree that a return to the past is not possible, and it's been said several times. Um, I think we have seen a lot of solidarity also among festivals over the course of the last year, and I will be excited to see this continue even when this um, pandemic situation ends. And I hope um, we will all take the time, the whole industry will take the time to process what has happened. And I go back and retain the importance of transparency and data here to not immediately jump back into, um, into the hamster wheel and continue working as we used to. Uh, then I have a comment on the idea of hybrid. I do think that there is an important, uh, hybrid can play a very important role in the future of film festival and festivals. And I'm now commenting more from an industry perspective because I do believe that there, there is something that needs to be bared in, bared in mind when programming a hybrid festival so that it doesn't become, and Denise said it with regards to the audience, but it's also true with regards to um, producers and filmmakers, um, that we don't create this, two-tier system in Europe where those who can travel and those who have the passports to travel and those who can move freely and have the means can be in a place and then all of the others, i.e. the international filmmakers, are joining in a, in a hybrid version. Um, this is one thing that I would like to see looked at, that I would like, like us all to take into consideration. Um, and then... The second thing that I wanted to say that I also believe that, yes, when you're selected as a filmmaker uh, to a festival, festival, festivals as they are physical and also in a hybrid form even more so, they provide you with many opportunities. At the same time, if you attend the festival for the first time, even if, you are, if, you are, if your project is selected or if you're attending without, without um, a project, you, it's still, you're still hitting walls and getting introduced to the small kind of closed shop that we are is very, very difficult. And I would like to see festivals making an effort to create these possibilities for new talents and new voices to break into, um, break, break into this exclusive, I mean, I'm gonna call it exclusive circus, knowing that I'm also part of it. And I think this starts by convincing the gatekeepers to rethink their practices. And it starts with all of us taking people along with us and by making an effort because only then can we also nurture a film culture or a documentary culture that is representative of the world we live in and representative of what we called vivid Europe um, in one of the other questions. Thank you, Thank you So these tars tasks and obligations and questions that we raised and that we received from you will go right away into our rethinking and reshaping for the next editions to come. So thank you very much for all of your expertise, your time and your input. They are very valuable for us. And as everybody already also said, this is right now the opportunity to really stop and look into the status quo and see where we can adjust and we can rethink and, and see where this whole process is leading us and how we can actually influence it in guide it to a sustainable future for all of us and make it fit for that. So I would like to thank all of you for being here from those different places. And now I think I can say it, see you all in Munich next year. I know we did that last year as well, but I'm pretty sure we should be over this because we would like to continue this discussion because this can just be a start of it. And we will take all this feedback with us for the next edition especially your remarks in the end, Marion, I will just note down in a bit. And um, I hope to see you around. Thank, thank you good. very much. And also awesome. thank you to the audience that were attending with us. We were a good crowd. So thank you. And have a look into the films, into the rest of the uh, sessions that we have prepared for you on our website. So thank you very much and goodbye. Goodbye.